Hi, my name is Donna Lewis and welcome to Live Streams. Before I get started, I'd like to tell you just a little bit about myself. I am an author. I wrote a book. It's a devotional. It was released last year. The title is Toxic to Transformed, 100 Words of Life to Renew the Mind. It's a recovery devotional for people who have experienced the harm of verbal and emotional abuse. It's a book that will give you hope. It will breathe life into your spirit. And by God's grace through his word, it will transform your mind. You can find it now on Amazon. I am also the founder and director of Breathe Life Ministries, a forum for worship and words of life. You can find me on Facebook at Breathe Life Ministries. You can also find me on the web at breathlifeministries.com. Well, without further delay, let's dive in. The subject today is the knowledge of God. I'd like to open us in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Thank you that you would stoop to reveal yourself to us, your creation. God, I thank you for your word that transforms the mind and renews the spirit. I thank you for your Holy Spirit because without it, there is no knowledge of you. God, I ask that you would draw us near and open our spirits, our soul, our mind to receive from you now. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pure and acceptable in your sight, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. So, the knowledge of God. I feel like it's a little bit like eating an elephant. How do you even begin? <laughs> well, as I tell my piano students, it's one bite at a time. So let's just take it one bite at a time. A. W. Tozier, a pastor, a mentor, and an author from many decades ago wrote on the subject of knowing God. The title of his book is The Knowledge of the Holy. And from that book, we have a quote. What comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. I'm going to read that quote to you one more time. What comes to mind when we think about God is the most important thing about us. It took me a while to really process what Tozier is saying there. But you know, I have a feeling that he came to that conclusion because he himself was a student of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote this to his church in Ephesus. It's from Ephesians 1, verse 17. In his letter to them, he was praying, and he prayed that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, would give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. He continued in verse 18, I pray that the perception of your mind may be enlightened so you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the glorious riches of his, of his inheritance 
among the saints. And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power to us who believe according to the working of his vast strength. Paul could not think of any higher blessing to put on his church than the knowledge of God, the personal, intimate revelation from God himself to you and I. So let me ask you, God, what is coming to your mind right now? What images? Are there scriptures from God's word that come to your mind? Are there names? Is there an experience that comes to your mind? When you simply hear the title, God, I encourage you to soak on that for a moment. Write it down. Just list everything that comes to your mind when you think about God. Because Tozier says it's the single most important thing about you. Why do you suppose that is? Well, I believe it's because how we view God impacts every corner of our being. Our choices, our goals, our family, our purpose, our emotions. It governs all of those things, how we relate to each other. If we accept this fact, then the quality of our perception of God is directly impacting those most precious elements of our life. If we have a low esteem of God, an irreverent view of him, that impacts our choices and our relationships. If we have a high estimation of God, that also impacts our choices in relationships. So, when we do a little self-analysis right now, and we look at our view of God, All of us can stand to improve that estimation of God within ourselves. We can improve the quality of our relationship with God. We can go deeper than we are today. We can get a more truthful estimation of God than what we have today. But how is this done? How do we begin such a austere journey, such a, uh, a high journey? Well, I think we can start by asking ourselves a question. What is currently influencing our knowledge of God? Is it personal opinion? Is it past experience with an authority figure, a human authority figure? Maybe a parent, a relative, a teacher, a pastor? Is it a philosopher? Is it a favorite YouTube influencer? What is currently having a significant impact 
on the way you view God. The second question that we can ask ourselves is what priority does it have in our life? How important is it to know God deeper than we do right now? A.W. Tozer also said this in his book, The Knowledge of the Holy. Worship is pure or base as the worshiper entertains high or low thoughts of God. So what we bring to God as an act of worship, and worship is really the priority that we place on God. It's the love we give to him, the reverence we give him, the honor we come to him with. And Tozer believes that it's either base, meaning low, um, corrupted, or pure, clean, honoring, based on how we see God. So if we have a low estimation of him, we're, gonna, gonna, we're, we're going to come to him irreverently. If we come to him with a high estimation, then we are going to be coming to him with a truthful, humble, honoring heart. When Paul wrote to the Ephesians, his prayer was that they would, they would experience God in wisdom and revelation. So let's take a couple minutes to just digest what wisdom means. The book of Proverbs says that wisdom is begun with the fear of the Lord. It says it this way in Proverbs 2, 5, and 6. Then you will understand the fear of the Lord and find the knowledge of God. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. So to understand God with wisdom means that we first come to him with fear. Now, when we think of the word fear, we think of terror, of um, trembling. But really, it's more like if you were to see a lion in the road, you would not just run up to that lion and throw your arms around and start ruffling his fur, right? No, you would have a healthy reverence of the power of the lion. You wouldn't just assume you can run up there and give him a big old hug. That lion might rip you to pieces. When we come to God, we must understand his power, his holiness, his purity. There is no corruption in him. He is the creator of the universe. We must come to him from the perspective and the honor of just how mighty and glorious he is. Then 
we open ourselves up for God to reveal himself to us on his terms. We want to allow him to draw us into a sober understanding of his awesomeness. Hebrews describes God as a consuming fire. You can find that in Hebrews 12, verses 28 and 29. Now, revelation. What does it mean to have the revelation of God? And where does this revelation come from? Well, let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 2, verses 10 and 11. But God now unveils those profound realities to us by the Spirit. Yes, he has revealed to us his inmost heart and deepest mysteries through the Holy Spirit, who constantly explores all things. After all, who can really see into a person's heart and know his hidden impulses except for that person's spirit. So it is with God. His thoughts and secrets are only fully understood by his spirit, the spirit of God. It is through the filling of the Holy Spirit that we begin to experience the wonders of the intimacy of the knowledge of God. How does one experience the infilling of the Holy Spirit? Well, it is by first coming to God in faith. Hebrews 11 says that without faith, it is impossible to please God because we have to first come to him knowing that he exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. Jesus said, I, speaking of himself, am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So we must come through the Son, Jesus Christ. You see, Ephesians goes on to say that God demonstrated this power in the Messiah, speaking of Jesus, raising him from the dead and seating him at, it, at his right hand in the heavens, far above every ruler and authority, power and dominion, and every title given, not only in this age, but the age to come. And he put everything under his feet and it appointed him as head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. In other words, we come through Jesus Christ. And the only way we can come through Jesus Christ, according to the Apostle Paul, is by confessing Jesus Christ as Lord, being cleansed from every impurity, every lie, every deception, every sin, everything that is lower than God that we have done, you see, God is love, pure love, perfect 
love. And when we act outside of that, we separate ourselves from God. But Christ, in his sacrifice at Calvary, took all that sin onto himself and sacrificed it there. Then he raised himself from the dead, allowing you and I to come through him to the Father. The Apostle Paul says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In that beautiful moment, my friends, we are able to come boldly to God. You see, now that lion will not destroy us because we have the perfection of Christ in us. And we can boldly run up to that lion and say, may I know you. And through the Holy Spirit, filling us in that moment, inviting the Holy Spirit to come in and dwell in here with us, we begin to experience the awesome and wonderful knowledge of God. In closing, I just want to leave you with this other thought from Tozier. Without doubt, the mightiest thought the mind can entertain is the thought of God. And the weightiest word in any language is its word for God. The knowledge of God. It's a journey that will encompass all of eternity. I invite you now, my friends, to take the challenge that is, front, that is in front of you today and go deeper into the depths of the knowledge of God. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Son. Without him, Lord, we cannot enter the holiness of your gates. We thank you that Jesus opened the door for us to come through him into your mighty and beautiful presence. We ask now for your Holy Spirit to fill us that we might know you, the power of your resurrection, and the beauty of your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I encourage you to leave comments. I encourage you to share this video with your friends. I encourage you to share Christian women living with your friends. And join me on Facebook, Breathe Life Ministries. Have a beautiful day and join us again next month for more of live streams. God bless.